Hello friends, how are you? My name is Sarah. I, on my channel, I talk about books and reading. I get my books from the thrift store, from my local Buy Nothing group, from the library. I very rarely keep up with the newest releases. I'm not gonna say it never happens, but it's rare. I want to talk to you today about the first Nicholas Sparks book I read, which I borrowed from someone in my local Buy Nothing group. She said, oh, you like to read, you have to try Nicholas Sparks. And I said, okay, I'll try it. The one she gave me to borrow is Knights in Rodanthe. And yes, I looked up how to pronounce that. So if it's wrong, blame Google. Uh, for the record, there will be spoilers. Uh, the book came out in 20, 2002, September of 2002, so I imagine anyone who's interested in hearing about it has already read it. Uh, there has been a movie made from this book, but if you don't want to see spoilers, don't watch the rest of this video, because there are going to be a lot of spoilers. Uh, the story starts, it is a frame story, it's a story within a story which usually involves one of the main characters or sometimes a side character telling the main story that you hear. And this one starts with Adrian, who is, I think she's in her 60s. She is worried about her daughter, Amanda, who um, has recently been widowed and is struggling to pull out of the resulting mourning and depression. Amanda has children that she is letting the rest of the family take care of. Adrian is worried that Amanda is just not going to step up and take on her responsibilities again after her husband's death, after Amanda's husband's death. So Adrian decides she has to talk to Amanda and she has to tell her her own story to help Amanda cope with her own grief. So the backstory here is that Adrian has been divorced since her children were young, Amanda being one of her children. And um, when, she, when Amanda was 13, and she has one or two brothers, I've forgotten how many, They're, they don't feature in the story much. Adrian took a weekend to take care of a bed and breakfast that her friend owns in Rodanthe, North Carolina. They live somewhere in North Carolina. It's not like they, she went across the country. She just went over to her friend's bed and breakfast for the weekend to take care of it so that her friend could have a break. Um, that particular weekend, there was only one guest. His name is Paul, and he is a surgeon, again, somewhere in North Carolina. He is a surgeon, and he recently lost a patient who was from Rodanthe. And he has gone there to try to connect with the patient's family because there's been a big malpractice lawsuit and he was deemed unres not responsible for the patient's death, etc. And for some reason, he decided that going to see their family, his patient's family, would help them have closure, maybe bring him a little closure, etc. So that's why he's in Rodanthe this weekend, and he is staying at this bed and breakfast owned by Adrian's friend. Uh, long story short, too late. They fall in love, they spend a couple of nights together, they take walks on the beach, they cook and they drink wine together, a major storm rolls through and they weather that, and then when the power goes out, they have an indoor picnic, and they enjoy the firelight, and they, they're in love, right? At the end of this weekend, Adrian, of course, has to go back and take care of her kids, and Paul has quit his job in a major stressful big hospital, and he is planning to join his son, from whom he is kind of estranged, they're not as close as he would like them to be. They're not exactly estranged, but they're not as close as Paul would like for them to be. So he has made arrangements to join his son in Ecuador at his son's medical clinic. And they talk about possibly continuing their lives from that weekend on. They, they both agree that they have responsibilities they need to meet, and so they go their separate ways. But they continue to write letters to each other. And... Within 
I forget exactly how long, I want to say it was in, within a few months to a year, Paul is killed in a tragic car accident in Ecuador. And Paul's son sends a letter to Adrian talk, telling her, you know, dad just loved you so much. He talked about you all the time. He told me how wonderful you are. I think he may have even come to visit at some point. Um, so all of that is that all of that is the story that Adrian tells her daughter Amanda. When Amanda hears this story, her initial reaction is frustration. Why didn't you tell me? But very quickly, she decides that if her mom could have this great, true love of her life and could set it aside to take care of her and her brother or brothers, then she can set aside her grief to take care of her children. And um, I have some thoughts about this, the plot, about the writing, etc. To be completely honest, the writing was not great. It wasn't, I've seen worse, for sure. I've seen worse published. But, um, you know, there were a lot of cliches. Um, Adrian isn't like other women. She is just as beautiful without makeup, maybe even more so. She dresses simply, but she's still so stunning. She's most beautiful in just a sweater and jeans. Yeah, it's a bit cliche. Um, also, I remember at least one point in the book where Sparks says that he's talking through Paul's point of view, and he says that Adrian has some quality that Paul just can't name. And that's fine for the character to not be able to name what quality it is about another character that draws them together, but the author ought to be able to name that character. That's your job. It's your job as the author to tell us in words what's going on between people, between your characters. And to not do that is kind of, it comes across as lazy. Um, and then I am not a terribly romantic person, so I have a really hard time with the idea that these two people fell into true love over a weekend. Can you develop feelings for someone over a weekend? Sure. Can a weekend with someone lead to something bigger and longer and, and long lasting? Sure. Can you know in two days that this is your the love of your life? Eh, I really doubt it. I really doubt it. You can have a feeling, you can think maybe, but can you know? Not in two days. No. Sorry. No. And I am really dis... <sighs> I don't like the message that Amanda, who is widowed, she had children and a long-term commitment and he died suddenly and tragically and that's supposed to be equated to this weekend affair her mom had that doesn't track to me that just doesn't track can yeah that just doesn't track and i don't understand how adrian's story about her weekend affair is supposed to make adrian feel better about herself it sounds to me more like a guilt trip um, you know, I know you feel bad about losing your husband and the father of your children, but you know, I had a weekend affair one time and that guy died, so you need to snap out of it, is really the way it came across to me. And I, no, sorry, no, that's not okay. So I admit, I have not seen the movie. I don't know how that was handled. I have not read any other, other Nicholas Sparks books. And after this, I don't want to. Um, sorry to be so negative, but hey, that's life. Some things are good, some things are bad. We like some things, we don't like other things. Have you read Knights in Rodanthe? What did you think about it? Have you read other Nicholas Sparks books? And what do you think about them? 
Let me know in the comments. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up button. If you would like to subscribe to my channel, please, please click the subscribe button and then hit the little bell beside it to get notifications every time I upload. I think that's it. You guys have a really, really great day. Thanks. Bye.